Tuck yes, in snacks. and then slowly yes, release snacks. without blowing your nose. <laughs> slowly release. Okay. All right. Put your distractions away and, uh, as Pierce would say, lock in on the notes, on the board. Um, she's a groom. You've learned this in the past, but now we're going to add a new part to it, and then we're going to um, do more challenging questions, I guess. So to give you like a snapshot of where this lesson is going, um, you've learned it before, but I'm adding a new part, and then we just have more challenging questions. Um, we will not finish this in one day. It's not designed to so we're working with transformations of not just quadratics, all of the types of polynomial functions, um, absolute value functions, rational functions, square root functions, cubic functions. I want you to recall something. <clears throat> okay. Recall when you were learning. Recall when you were learning about. Um, quadratics. This is the vertex form for quadratic. Let me show you. I'm going to show you in a, a dotted letter. This, I'm trying to make it dotted, is the new part. We're going to learn what the coefficient of x controls in the graph. You already have learned in the past what a does that either opens up or opens down or stretches or shrinks. You've learned what H does that slides right or left. You've learned what K does that picks the whole graph up and goes up or down. Now you're going to learn what B does. B controls horizontal stretch or uh, horizontal shrink. So you're learning B along with the stuff you've already learned in the past. We're also not sticking to just quadratics. We're applying it to other types of functions as well. Okay? And we're going to go slow with this so that you can put it all together on the problems where it's requiring more than one transformation. So we're going to start with the basics and work our way up to the more challenging variables that change the graph. And that, that's it. There's no, there's no word problems or anything. Like, that's the entire packet. It's us just learning what each letter does, practicing it, and then at the end, we put them all together on a single problem. Okay? All right, so. Can you hand me um, I like that color. Me too. White. I have a head of pink. I really want to put stickers on it, and I don't have a sticker. Put stickers on that one and keep this one clean. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen one of those. I've heard of them. Ding! <laughs> No, nope, Garrett. Right. <clears throat> All right, ready? Oh. I've never seen the boot. Ow. Boot keeps it from being oh. Wow. I'm bleeding. Yes. Ow. That's not the land. All right. Oh. Ow. <laughs> This slide's purpose is to lay out in front of you all the different types of functions that we're going to talk about. These are the mother functions. I'm bleeding out of my pointer finger. I hope not. Garrett threw a pencil at me. You should be pulling you like this. You must have other suspects. That was funny. You've got linear when it's x to the first power. Y'all stay with me. You've got quadratic when it's x squared. You've got, clearly 
I've run out of room. Hold on. I don't understand why the rest of my writing is not showing. So let me make that smaller, and then I'll come underneath these, and I'll get some. All right, so this is a square root function. This is the cubic function. This is a cube root function. This is rational, meaning it's a fraction with x in the bottom. And this is absolute value. It really helps to know what the mother function looks like uh, for the equation as we go to transform them. When I say mother function, I mean nothing's been done to it. It hasn't been flipped, it hasn't been stretched, has not been rotated or um, shifted. Like nothing's done to it. It's the most basic um, graph that you can graph that is linear or quadratic or square root. You will notice that the only one that has an asymptote Asymptote meaning an imaginary line that the graph approaches but never touches is the rational one, and that's because what's the problem? You can't have a zero in the bottom where there's an x. So in this parent graph, this mother function, the asymptote is at x equals zero because if zero were plugged in, you have a problem. Um, the reason the cubic graph says Saturday night fever and is highlighted. It's highlighted to draw your attention to the Saturday Night Fever. The Saturday Night Fever, I know you probably, there's a chance you don't know the movie, but it was John Travolta from the 70s. It is a classic, but anyways, on the front cover of this VHS. Oh, VHS. Hey, I watch VHSs. Stay, stay, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. On the front cover of this VHS, <clears throat> that might be a DVD now, he has his arms, of course they're more dramatic, but I like to curve it so you'll remember the curve. But the, basically what I need you to know is if I say Saturday Night Fever, you need to think this. Will you show us the... I, yeah, I'm doing it right now, right here. No, no like, the like the actual no, DVD. <laughs> oh, it's right there. No, the real one. Oh, yeah, I'll pull it up, I'll show you at the end. I know, sir. I'll, I'll show you the picture at the end, but I want everybody's right arm up and your left arm down. I promise during the exam, you're going to end up going like this while you're taking Boom. the go. Everybody, right arm up, left arm. If you're not participating, I'm going to make you stand up here with me and then shake Oh, I'll go stand up there with you. Shake your bum. Right arm up. Left shake my bum. Shake my bum. Shake, 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 shake. Hey, Garrett's not participating. Garrett, all the way out. All the way out, Garrett. Oh, yeah. Come there you on. go, Jack. We like Jack. Woo! There you go. Thank you. Like All right. Okay, put your arms down now. You just done the parent graph. You just you just done the parent graph for the cubic function. Saturday night fever. So here's why I said to do this. If I say it's Saturday night fever, y'all listen. And I say reflect over the x-axis, what would happen to my arms? They would do this. That's going to help you as you're doing this, okay? I promise it's going to help. All right. That's enough disco. Now, come to this slide. Like I said, we're going to start simple. <laughs> yeah, don't throw that pencil back at me, Garrett. No, I did not. We're going to start simple. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to be on your phone in class. My dad texted me. Oh, if you need to come over here to get started. Oh. So we're going to start simple with just translating the, the graph. Translation, you may remember from geometry, means sliding it. But we're going to use the word shift. Shift. Okay. Shift. <laughs> it's like somebody's sitting on a 
This is the mother function for quadratic. Mother function for quadratic. I am going to label it MF. Mother function. Uh, I think some people will look at our notes and. Uh, zero, zero, and it expands up. I was saying some people might look at our notes and think that that meant something else. No, they'll be fine. All right. <laughs> My mom. Now, Jesus. now, we're going to go to this slide. Now, we're going to go to this slide. And I want you to notice what has happened. Now, watch. First of all, I'm going to take the mother function. And I'm going to shift either up or down by some number. C stands for a constant. A number by itself. So, for example, if you notice these right here, that's the mother function shifted down to. This is the mother function shifted up what? Four. Four. Notice this graph. The mother function is the light dotted curve right here. And the blue graph is the new one. It has shifted up by how many units? Three. Well, two. according to the picture, it shifted up two units, or it satisfies C. So you'll notice right here, this is the generic form. I went by the graph itself. Since it goes up two, I'm just going to tack on a plus two to the end of the mother function. So the mother function is that it's a quadratic, and if I'm doing a, sh a vertical shift, that means I'm going up or I'm going down, right? He's laughing because I, I was stumbling on my word. No. Because um, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Take the, I know. Take the, I know. I know. I got you. Mother function. translation, 
you're going to see me draw that asterisk to remind you of this conversation right here. The reason that you have to be careful here is because there is going to be a sign change every time. There's going to be a sign change. So let me show you what an example of this would be. If you have a mother function in yellow and it goes, for example, left C units, then you would take the mother function and put plus C right there with the X to show that it's shifting left C units. Now this is hard for people to understand, so I always just go by what the picture is actually doing and show you the number. This is where the mother function started. It went left one, two, three, right? So the actual graph went left three units. So the function for this graph, it's called g of x. It's not going to be x squared minus three, because that would be vertical. It's going to be in here next to x, and it has a sign change might think, well, if I'm going left, negative numbers are to the left, so I should write negative 3. But this is the one that has the sign change, so you're going to do the opposite. And here's why there's a sign change. Go back to the very first slide where you wrote this down. You see that minus sign right there? That's why there's a sign change. Anytime there's a sign change, or anytime there's a minus sign in a formula, it means whatever variable follows it has a sign change. So that's why this happens every time. And it does happen every single time. So if I was to look at this equation, g of x equals x plus 3 quantity squared, it would tell me I'm dealing with the quadratic, and I'm going, I see right 3, but it's actually in the parentheses, so that means left 3. How are you going to remember that it's got a sign change, that you have to be careful. I want you to do your best to draw a bold H here. Do your best to draw a bold H. Now this is silly, but it works. Make a note, be careful. Anytime the number is in some type of bracket, parentheses, radical, absolute value, I'm trying to think of all the possible cases. Anytime it's within some type of brackets, I want you to fold just this part to show that I'm, I'm trying to draw your attention to the fact that a capital H has brackets, right? Or bars, you can think of it that way. So anytime the number is in side some type of brackets, it's a horizontal movement with a sign change. Okay? H stands for horizontal. Horizontal is right and left. The brackets of the H are to remind you if it's a number on the inside of any parentheses, square root. Absolute value. That's it. Uh, Q. Parentheses. Yes. Yes. So write that down and then uh, come over here and let's try this. Let's make a note. For example, if you had f of x, don't write big. We're going to do three examples. If you have f of x like this. What type of mother function is that? It's a quadratic. And where's it going? Going to the right one. You see it? It's in the parentheses, which should say, hold up. Also, think of the H for the phrase, hold up. Like, wait a minute. Hold up. Something's hold different. Up. And then I see 
on negative, that would make me think left, but it's actually right. So this would go right one. Uh, try this one. I mean, there's only two two ways to practice this. You either got a positive or a negative, so it's not like I can throw a, a humdinger at you. Left side. Oh, I thought you said left side. So which way would this one go? Yeah, this would be left seven. All right, let's do another one. It's a real, this one's a real challenge. I don't think it's a challenge. Calm down. Mm -hmm. Oh, fine. the whole time. It's H plus BC plus money equals GF. It's the G. There's the F. Can you just write the money on the screen real quick? Please. I don't think I can endorse this. Can you write the money equation on the screen? Just one time. Just put it down somewhere. Okay, it's, it's H times. Okay. This slide here is showing you what it would look like if we were manipulating the cubic function. Stay with me. This is showing you how you would take a cubic function and do that horizontal translation. It would look like this, where um, wherever there's an x, it would now be x plus c, or x minus c, depending on what direction you're going. So the takeaway here is if I gave you a cubic function and I said I want you to slide it right forward, you would take x and replace it with parentheses x minus 4 everywhere there was an x. Okay, Which I don't think we actually end up doing, but I wanted you to know how it's applied in a cubic. Because it's easy to do with a quadratic, but cubics are harder for people to visualize. But this is the algebra behind it, okay? Now come to this slide. This is where we practice. Practice A and B, and then practice C and D. You have two slides of practice. I am not looking for absolute point values. 
I'm not looking for a T table or perfect. I'm looking for the mother function point, and then where would it move? So like A. A is what mother function? Okay, and it is transforming in what manner? So we're going to use that terminology that we learned. It is shift, shifting, down, sits. So the mother function is sits on zero, zero. We'll put it in dotted line. And then the actual one that I'm graphing needs to go down six, put a point, and we're just sketching. We're not trying to make it perfect. So you can just sketch a quadratic down here. The goal is not your absolute points. The goal is, do you understand where it would go? So the next one is, what type of mother function? It is absolute value. If you need to glance back at that second or third slide. It's the big old V. That is the V. It's a, it's a V graph. The mother function for absolute value is right on the origin. What does this say it's doing? It's going right for it. This is one of those inside and an enclosure, right? So this is a horizontal, you gotta start practicing this terminology. It is a horizontal shift right four, and it is the absolute value function. So we're simply gonna take the mother function point at zero, zero, we're gonna go right four, and then we're gonna draw the graph. So don't get caught up in like where the square root graph actually, you know, would go to. You know where the mother function of it starts at. And then you're going to transform it based on the equation. The mother function for both of these is the square root function, which starts at zero and then it's kind of, it's a, it's basically half of a parabola and the reason it's half is because in order for it to be a function the rest of the parabola would be down here and it would fail the vertical line test. So that's why the square root function is half a parabola. Now this is saying that it's doing what? Right to, right to. It's the square root and we are going to shift right Two. That is a horizontal shift. It's underneath the radical, which is one of the enclosures that I was saying to think of. So we're just going to go right to, put a point, and draw the square root. H of X is also a square root. What's it doing? It's shifting left, two, down, three. We have to put an asterisk. So we're going to go 
left two, down three, and then down our square root. So if you're shifting up or down, the number is, is self-explanatory. If you're shifting right or left, think of the capital H for hold up. It is backwards from what it looks like. So you have to be careful. We have three more slides and then we'll, we'll call it done. This is a good stopping point. Now what we're going to look at is the when a graph is reflecting. Okay. You've only learned one type of reflection when you did this before in previous math class. I'm going to teach you the second type of reflection. So, the reflection that you already know is this one right here. If the entire function has been multiplied by a negative 1, then the leading coefficient would be negative and the entire graph is going to reflect over the x-axis. You're used to this one. You've done this one before in years past. For instance, negative x squared is the mother function quadratic that has been reflected down. So this one you already know. Take those notes, write it down. It's the next slide that's new. So if we're reflecting over the x-axis, um, that's the one you know. What do you think the new one is? We're reflecting over the y-axis. That's the new one. Now, let's see if you can get there before I actually tell you. If we're reflecting over the y-axis, what direction is that reflection? What type of direction? Horizontal. What? Horizontal. Left and right. What horizontal. What describes that? Horizontal. What did I say you have to watch out for? Any type of? Sign changes. Horizontal. Horizontal transformation is counterintuitive. Anything horizontal, so any number inside the enclosure is counterintuitive. This reflection is going to be that. So okay. I'll, hold on, hold on. I'll show you. Is everybody good with this? Can I change the screen? All right, so look. If I take, look at the difference here, and then I'll let you write. If I take a quadratic, and I want to reflect over the y-axis, then I change the sign of x. We talked about this, right? This was a symmetry test. So if I change the sign of x, but then I square it, don't I end up with positive. positive x squared? That's why this is symmetric to the y-axis. So if you look at this picture, there's two graphs here, but they end up back on top of each other, which is why it has that symmetry we learned. Here's the square root function that does not have that symmetry. The mother function is in yellow. If I was to reflect it over the y-axis, I change the sign of x, if I plug a negative x in here, first of all, yeah, that would be a problem. But if we're just talking about the graph itself, it would reflect and go that way, okay? Um, which is totally different. Now, true. Uh, the graph, uh, now this down here is reminding you of what we did with our symmetry test. If you have negative f of x, it's going over the x-axis. If you have f of negative x, it's going over the y-axis. That's the same thing as the symmetry we talked about. If you reflect over the x, you change the y sign. If you reflect over the y, you change the x sign. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, I'll leave. And you're losing us all. Yeah. 